Hello everyone, and my name is Greystone. Uh, you can find me on mtgostrat.com writing articles. You can find me on Twitter at Master Greystone, and you can find me on MTGO as Greystone. So what I'm doing here is I'm um, replaying a match that I had against um, an Is It Post deck in Papa, and I am using my Aura Hexproof. So as you can see, I won the die roll, and so we're gonna go first. Now this is a replay, this is not live. Alright, and so let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got Art Forest, Ethereal Llama, Utopia Spall, Slesnia Guildgate, One Creature, Abundant Growth to Dig, and Alignify. Alright, so we're going to go through and we're going to do this. So there's down our Slesnia Guildgate, which is going to be our mana fixing, of which my deck has well, we've got four guild gates, four utopia spells, and four abundant growth. So that's twelve. That's twelve sources. Alright, and so here we're going to put down our forest. And we utopia sprawl, naming white. Well, we're going to tap that, and down goes our grid cover scout and our ethereal armor, giving us a uh, 3 3 first strike hexproof. It's only going to get bigger. On here we go, we see the beginnings of Cloud Post and Glim Post. So he's already going to be up on us by gaining two life. I absolutely hate that ability. But here we go, we're going to put down our abundant growth and dig up a little bit. Uh, so we're now looking at a 4-4. Four four. We're going to attack in. And we're going to play down a slippery boggle just to give us another creature on the ground. Right, and so here we go, we see our island. Right, and there's a Seagate Oracle, so he's going to come into play. You're going to get, take a look at the top two cards of your deck. Take one, put it into your hand, and the other one on the bottom of your library. And it's not bad for a 1-3 blocker. It's got a little bit of a fat boat there. It can stop most creatures, but hey. So we're going to end and go to upkeep, and there's a beautiful little rancor sitting right there, ready for us. So, we're going to play down the rancor, and we're going to look at a 7-5. A 7-5 trample coming in. He's not going to block, and he goes down to 11. We end combat, and we're going to play down a rather slippery boggle. Just to have another creature on the board. Oh, and there's another Glimmer Post, so he's going to gain 3 life off that because it's based off the number of locusts in play and Cloud Post and Glimmer Post, two cards that never should have been combined in any set, um, form that powerful combo. And here we start with the Mole Drifter. So here is a card that is absolutely. It's disgusting when you break it down. You got a tier two flyer for five, which is not the best com like not the best cost in the world. But when it comes into play, you get two cards, and you can also do it for a zero cost, which yeah. Also, you're paying three mana for a oh three mana for two cards. It sounds like a divination in a creature. Right, so he plays that down. And so we stock up on an olid. And so what we're going to do here... I'm just going to attack straight in, because he's only got the one mana up. He doesn't have much of a threat going. And... So there he goes down to seven. And we play down our nolid. And this is where he gives up. So I will soon be back with round two. Two. Oh, and here we are, we're back with round two. And so let's see what we're going to be facing up against this time. Oh, and so we take a look at our hand. Oh, I've got. Um, I, uh, from the sideboard, we've brought, dropped in travel preparations. A great card if you're facing off against Fisher, which I don't know if this deck was running it, but I figured why not? because it uh, could come in handy. 
Alright, and so... I did not like that hand. So here we go with a Mulligan to um, 6. That is our guild gate for any fixing we need. We got Utopia Sprawl for fixing. A snake Umbra, which I run because I do not have the money to afford um, the Ancestral Masks. So, and it's a beautiful card when you get break it down. You got Totem Armor, which all of my guys that have Hexproof I'm not terribly worried about. Um, you also get a plus one, plus one, and the, whenever the creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. I cannot express how important uh, card draw and number of cards in hand is to any deck. And so he starts off with a Preordain and an Island. So it comes over to us, and we draw in. There's a beauty of a card, the Armadillo Cloak. Plus two, plus two, Trample, and... An almost lifelink-like ability, but not quite lifelink. And makes it a little bit better, in my opinion, but that uh, really is oh, going off semantics. Right, so, there comes down the pr um, Prophetic Prism. A very common card in almost every post deck, because you want to be able to draw that card, because it replaces itself. You're running off of colorless mana with the Cloud Post and Glimmer Post, and for this, with the colorless mana that those guys are running, you tap this for one, and you have your mana fixing built in. Can't blame them for running it, it's an absolutely amazing card. And so, here we go, we drew up into a Silesnia Guildgate. Well, we're going to play down our forest, and instantly we're going to... No, and not instantly, but... I'm uh, going to Utopia Sprawl to the forest, calling on white. And we're going to bring down our Selena... Ledge Walker. Card that it can't, pretty much can't do anything about because of its hexproof. So even if he did have Fisher, there's nothing he could do. The only card we're really worried about in this build is Curfew, and I'm not really worried about an Is It Deck, Is It Post specifically, running a card like Curfew in a sideboard. So there we see the Oracle again. So he drew, he drew, put something on the bottom of his library. And now we go. So here we are going to pay all three. And we're going to snake Umbra. And it's a 2-2. Two, two. Now you might be wondering why I did an Armadillo Cloak. Again, I cannot express the power that is the number of cards in hand. So I drop him across. And we, if we have it, do have it in hand, and we're going to be gaining life eventually. I'm not really worried about any big clock. And so we drew up, we drew up into another forest. We end combat, we can play down that forest. And on goes our Rango. So now we're sitting at a 4-2. A 4-2 trample that any time it deals damage, we get to draw a card. Alright, so here he goes, he's going to preordain. Drop down a quicksand. Good card. I don't quite know why he brought it. Uh, if he brought it in from his sideboard, if he was mainboarding it, but unfortunately, it has the word target in it, so there is nothing that it can do to my hexproof guy. So he goes on, and he does a stone rain on our Utopia Sprawl Forest, dropping us back in the mana count. So. Well, quite happy with that, but not much we can do. So we go through our upkeep, we draw another Utopia Sprawl. So we play down our other Selesnia Guildgate, and then we put the Utopia Sprawl on our forest. And yes, I could have done travel preparations here, but on the off chance he had any sort of hand disruption, I didn't want to leave the Armadillo Cloak as the only card in our hand. I've been burned by um, Piracy Charm on that before. Um, so we just walk in, we do our fall, we draw our card, and it's another ledge walker. So we end out of combat, and because of our Utopia Sprout earlier, we get our two mana, and there it goes down our ledge walker. So we've got a second creature in play. Right, and so, there we go, it's on to his turn. He comes in. I don't know if he's hoping that I will lock with that, but 
one damage I'm not terribly worried about it I take it and we go on to second main phase oh, and here's all the big mana and there is that mole drifter so he fills his hand back up and he's got his 2-2 two -two flyer so his 2-2 two -two flyer is sitting there and he's thinking that this guy is now going to be useless because I can't do anything about it he's hoping to be able to sit down back and block and be able to take my guy out so but unfortunately for him we have our armadillo cloak and so now we have our 6-4 trample hexproof gains life whenever it deals damage and draws a card whenever it deals damage to a player so we swing in with that on he elects to take it so we put these on the stack we draw up our card put them down to eight and we go into our main phase at this point we put down our other land and i'm going to put travel preparations targeting both of my creatures so i now have a 2-2 that can block his mold drifter for whatever reason he decides he's going to attack and this is his turn and this is where he gave up which i'm very very shocked about but i didn't see any posts out glimmer or cloud um but seven cards in hand and seven damage on the ground that he can't oh sorry well on the ground but can only be blocked by flying and a 2-2 plus whatever card i've got left in hand i guess he just felt that he um he couldn't do it so yes this is my version of hexproof which again ron snake umbra because i don't have the i don't have the ancestral masks and i also run lignify a beautiful little enchantment that turns a creature into a 0-4 tree folk and removes all of its special abilities. So, yes, that is my... the differences in my build versus a lot of the others that I've seen on the daily lists. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and have fun. Have a good night.